Hello guys, this is JP Saricolia once again coming to you and this time I have another review for another omnibus and this time is the Spider-Man by David Michelini and Eric Larson. Alright, this is the side art as you can see, pretty cool, very standard. Here in the back you see every Spider-Man story featuring the action pack art of Eric Larson including his landmark fan favorite collaboration with writer David Michelini and uh, oh, I love this. All this, you know, all these issues here are my favorite. If you have seen my previous reviews of Eric Larson, uh, The Return of the Sinister, Sinister Six and uh, The Revenge of the Sinister Six, you, you, you know that I really am in love with Eric Larson's work. The intro to Legendary Talents, One Amazing Era for Spider-Man. Love that art right there. And the creators, of course, an introduction to, uh, you know, Eric Larson and David McAleen. One of the coolest things about this um, omnibus, is, uh, the new omnibus, is, is this rap around art and sometimes it's a miss sometimes it's, they don't hit the mark but this time on this one I just definitely love the color I love the art I love how they did it here of course you can see the side which has the standard now the same as you see out on the outside of the uh, um, the dust jacket and here uh, you can see the background oh cool definitely extremely cool going inside the book you can see it has a very very good um, uh, binding and uh, definitely uh, Marvel is getting extremely good with that uh, and you can see uh, this Spider-Man uh, this intro is this have the new standard for Spider-Man I think the new standard for a lot of the omnibuses uh, as you can see and of course you got writers of David McElhinney, Eric Larson, you have Howard Mackey and Jim Owsley and of course pencilers Eric Larson and you have some work from Mark Bagley this is the table of contents very cool there's a very cool Venom here very very menacing looking but one of the greatest things um, about this run in particular is the fact that this covers everything that uh, uh, Eric Larson did with Spider-Man uh, as you, I, I mentioned before in my previous reviews and you probably saw that too as well um, I love I love uh, Eric Larson's work uh, for those that don't know Eric Larson started very very young uh, in comics since he was a teenager since he was a kid he was drawing and doing all kind of stuff on his own he created a character uh, who he called the dragon that then later became the savage dragon which is definitely his signature character is the one that everybody knows from Eric Larson landed uh, some jobs working for different uh, indie uh, publishers or indie uh, comic book companies that no longer exist and he was doing stuff for them uh, little jobs here and there and ultimately he ended up at DC Comics as usual this comics is very good at bringing people in into the industry and he worked for them he did a lot of fill-in work a lot of different work a lot of people did not like his style then and as you can see here on the art style um, this are the initial uh, initial parts this is uh, feelings that actually you can also find in the amazing spider-man uh, by uh, Todd McFarlane they're there um, a lot of people uh, uh, try to compare that art um, to the art of, uh, I love this one here, look at that. There's a better, to me, he is better than Todd in, in, in a lot of ways, uh, McFarlane. You know, Larson is better than that McFarlane drawing Spider-Man. But of course, we're gonna go in detail more about that. I'm gonna explain myself better later on in this video. Look at that. Love these panels, love these layouts. Um, it's definitely, it is true that Larson has a much better understanding of dynamic paneling or dynamic uh, drawing uh, than uh, Todd did. Yeah, Todd is very good at creating hot that wall factor. But Larson was better at organizing and really bringing everything together. Uh, he is extremely a good a fan of, uh, uh, in this case, of uh, Jack Kirby. He admires Jack Kirby and he talks about it. If you go watch, uh, follow him, on his uh, on his different on Twitter's uh, account, or if you follow him on Facebook, you're gonna know that he definitely loves to to talk uh, and supports, and he's very supportive of that. Like like this one. Look at that. The colors pop, of course, with this omnibuses. So uh, going back into what he uh, was saying, uh, he started uh, very um, very very. Um, young and he was in DC people didn't really care much about his art he was still developing the art he was still creating when he got into this you know he started showing a, a lot of a great uh, ability for it but still you know people still will compare him with Todd and they were thinking that he was just a copycat of Todd well just that's farther from the truth uh, I always love the way he does actually black cat I love his panel layouts I love his uh, covers which are good um, I love that this when I look at these eyes I see that inspiration it reminds me of uh, Frank Miller uh, definitely he has a little bit of it um, he has this cartoony style 
Uh, he resembles a little bit of the, that Frank Miller of older, you know, older Frank Miller art, which is an inspiration for a lot of artists. Uh, and you can see all of this here. Uh, so, you know, he went into DC and he was doing some stuff for DC and ultimately, uh, you know, end up at Marvel doing some film and work. Um, love this one. Every time I see this one, this reminds me of, of course, the dragon, the savage dragon. It's one of this panel, one of the famous, uh, famous panels or famous uh, covers from the savage dragon. Uh, love it. Love that darkness around his eyes. All of that. He's definitely good. It's really a cool, cool feature. And I love his clean uh, pan uh, panels, are cleaner, of course, than Todd, easier to understand. Love this face, always that first splash. The, pay the, the first splash always matters in the story. And he really follows the school of Jack Kirby, and you will see it. If you really kind of study it, you'll see it. But yes, uh, and you can see this one. Look at Black Cat. He's very good at uh, definition of women. Look at that face. Have you ever seen the way he draws? He draws extremely, extremely weird. You know, <laughs> he had never seen anybody doing it the way he does it. You know, he does it in a way, he definitely draws with his wrist. Um, and, um, oh, wow, he, but he does it, and he is good at it, and he's dynamic, and he, he's really fast. Uh, everyone has a different way of doing things. But, yes, a lot of people, you know, they were not as crazy with him. Uh, once Todd left, um, you know, um, the Amazing Spider-Man to create his own Spider-Man. And look at this Venom. Wow, this Venom is super, super jacked up. He is cool. Muscle, you know, muscle everywhere. Uh, and he is actually the first one that actually introduced the tongue to uh, uh, Venom. He is the one. According to some stories, he, he actually saw another drawing of um, uh, Todd McFarlane that has like a... He thought he had a tongue, but actually no, he has a, an open mouth. So he, he thought that and he just copied it and he decided to even make it longer. Because he wanted to to even go beyond what Todd... Of course, you have to realize this. Todd had uh, uh, had left an, uh, you know, a print and the character that uh, people were trying to really uh, compare, uh, uh, in this case, Larson with Todd. And uh, he needed to make his own signature style. And uh, of course, in the beginning, he is, is he's doing his part. He's doing a lot of it. It's a lot of the stuff he does. Love the way he does clouds. Uh, a lot of the stuff he was doing, uh, it, it, it seems that he was actually uh, kind of copying or trying to do what Todd was doing. But little by little, you can see that he got more comfortable on it in his skin, more comfortable in his own style. And uh, you can see that the evolution as you progress, you can see that he is no longer imitating, but it's more doing his own thing. And to me, his Venom has always been my favorite Venom. I do like the uh, Backley's Venom, which follow up after after Eric, Eric, but I see this Venom as, to me, the quintessential Venom style. Uh, better than, of course, um, uh, Todd McFarlane's. Uh, but, okay, uh, you can see all of that. This is a story that includes uh, Venom. Pretty cool, pretty cool layout. Definitely love this one here. And uh, you know, this is getting just we're just getting comfortable here. Uh, we're getting really comfortable in the art. Uh, and we're gonna move a little faster. It's gonna take a while, of course. You know, as you know me, I'm not just one of those reviewers that just go in you know, a slow or really takes. Uh, too fast and those things really fast and give you my ideas. That's not my style. That's not what I do. Love this here. The Wolverine looks phenomenal. He looks super cool. That's not my style. Look at Wolverine. Again, I love the brown custom. That's my favorite custom. Um, another type of uh, uh, reviewer that just simply is going to tell you or give you a quick, uh, uh, you know, uh, overview of things. I have to kind of show you. Uh, the way I see it is this. If you see the art, then you know how I feel. Because I'm a visual person, and I'm sure if you come to YouTube, it's because you're a visual pe person, too. So, if I want to read a book, if I want to read a review, I go online and read a review. I just Google it and read it. If I want to see it, then I come to YouTube. And that's why you end up here. And, and that's what I do. That's what I like. You know, if I, I, you know, I follow many reviewers. Uh, some of just give their ideas, and I'm okay with that. But is this is the thing to me. When you're telling me and you're showing me what you're doing, then definitely I, you, you get my attention. You know, it really, really gets my attention. Uh, look at this. Wow. This is bloody. This is the time when the 90s were actually, you see Marvel really pushing the, the you know, the envelope, pushing the, the boundaries a little more. And uh, you can see the blood. I don't know how that passed, but hey, it, it is what it is. Um, 
it is Wolverine after all. You know, he is not playing nice, and he shouldn't be plays nice. You know, he is the best at what he does. And this is to me the the quintessential or my favorite run for uh, from Larson and the um, the Amazing Spider-Man, which is the Return of the Sinister Six. I remember this like yesterday. I remember reading, going through this. And this actually brought me again. Uh, into the comics. Yeah, I read a lot of the McFarlane stuff, which, you know, I was kind of keeping with it, but I was not as interested on it. Um, I can be honest. Um, but yes, it was Larson style, which it was to me cleaner. It was easier to uh, to read. I love his, his drawing. Uh, and he's just getting comfortable. And uh, he has this cartoony style, but uh, at the same time, it's very mature. And but it's cleaner, easier to follow through. Um, uh, he does also a lot of close up as Matt Farling, but he does more uh, bodies. Uh, you know, he does more like full layout with the bodies and the in motion, which is even better. Uh, the thing about just doing close up is, which is easier, is 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 good to have those close ups. And you know, Matt Farling was uh, was phenomenal doing so. But at the same time, it makes uh, uh, the job uh, easier for the drawer. You know, if you draw th all those those things. You know, you kind of, and you do it in a, f f a full uh, pay, you know, layout page. Of course, you save a lot of paper by doing so. But you know, that you cut in corners just to to get to 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 do your work. But um, you know, I love that. I love that. Um, but yes, he was better at doing it than I would say McFarland because he was also given full bodies or full shots, and uh, that's what you want. You want just a, a, an array, you want a surprise, you want you know things to kind of vary and change, and you want a really good work. And like I said, I love the way he does the clouds. I love his backgrounds. I love that. I love the clean backgrounds too. He's good at those things. This is definitely the best one in this bunch. And, um, you know, I already reviewed this before. And you've seen my little reviews of them, of those books, on the premiere editions. But this is, I was so, and I said it on those reviews. The moment that they come and they do this in the Omnibus, I'm sold. And I actually, I bought this as soon as it came out. And the return to, I love this one. This is definitely my favorite issue in the whole run. This is my favorite issue. I have always gonna love Fall. Someone dies. Definitely, I read it. I remember like it was yesterday when I bought it for the first time. I went to the newsstand and grabbed my copy, and I took it home. And man, I got that was sad by the end of the story. But you, you'll know if you read it. If you have read it, you'll know the vulture. He does the vulture fantastic. I love his vulture because it's not a weak vulture. It's a strong vulture. Look at this, the king ping, all of this. Love a lot how he does, you know, all this, the bridge, you know, love this one here. He looks terrific. I love the vulture. Um, Mary Jane is always looking hot. You know, that's the way he did it. You can see Doctor Strange. Love that one. Definitely, there's a lot of detail. This one has more detail than the previous jobs. Love this one. He is definitely, looks cinematic. He is very cinematic. Um... Look at that clean panel. It's cinematic. It gives you, goes from point A to point B to point C and takes it to the end. And that's how you do it. This is what makes the difference. If you can see that, it can, you can see the greatness of Eric Larson. He is much better. And he has done that with the dragon, the savage dragon, which I am a fan. And I'm waiting, hoping that one day we can get a full, you know, like an omnibus collection. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully one day because it's definitely a one fantastic run. One of the longest runs in the history of comics uh, just by one single artist, which well, he owns the right. So he does his own work. Nobody else does it for him. And I love that. You know, one thing is the, the amount of detail. Eric does a lot of detail in his panel. You can see here, somebody's being buried, but um, buried, and then look at see the faces. Look at those expressions. It really tells a story. Those little details tell a story. Like this, people, you know, you see their faces, their sadness. It's a lot of stories, and this is what makes him phenomenal. Major looking really good there. The Sinister Six. Wow, cool. Look at that. And he has a lot of things, a lot of the cool Easter eggs that nobody really noticed. If you look at this panel here, you're always going to see down there. Who do you see? Wolverine. I should try to remember whose that is. But anyway, yeah, that's Wolverine. So you see all that in the New York City panel. It just, I don't know, it's just cool. He was having fun. He was having fun. Look at that. This is amazing. 
This is to me, that's what the reason why I said earlier, this is my favorite issue. This was the best drone issue that he did. You look at that face. It was the best. My favorite one, still my favorite one. Look at that. Definitely all, you know, he is phenomenal. Look at the Nova. Look at that. Look at those, the, you know, the, that, that, the, the lines in the background, which a lot of this he took from, you know, from, you know, from, you know, Kirby, which actually was the one, the father of all of this, you know, look at that Electro. Always love that Electro. Always love that battle. Look at that. This is my favorite one. Man, I'm just getting excited here. But, you know, going through all of this, you know, and as you can see, it's just, um, I'm such an admirer of his work. Um. A lot of people always saw him as just a copycat of Doc. I said that before. Um, but he that was not the truth. You know, if you really follow his work, you realize he has his own charisma. He put him put his own dynamic view of things. He made it cleaner. Actually, uh, in my opinion, I think Eric was actually the one that really allowed for Spider-Man to evolve and, and, and in a different direction, you know, not the dark path that he was taking later with Spider-Man, um, uh, the Spider-Man just magazine by itself, but also to, to it brought it back into a more cleaner um, look, and of course, you we cannot point out, I've been talking about Eric Larson, but Michelini, definitely, Michelini is the, the, the pillar that has kept the Spider-Man alive. Michelini did it for the longest, did it with Todd McFarlane, did it with um, Larson, did it with Bagley, and it was Michelin's ideas that kept that. To me, that was the best time for Spider-Man, in my opinion. Of course, this is where kind of grew up with, this is where I kind of went through in my period, look at Tarantula. Uh, all of those things really, really point that out, um, the importance of it, um, that the importance of um, the stories behind uh, uh, Peter Parker. That's the part that I like about Spider-Man. It's not about just the superhero. Some stories, it's all about the superhero. But Peter, uh, Spider-Man is all about Peter Parker's story. It's Peter Parker and his challenges. Look at this, Tarantula. Looking terrific with that kick. Oh, dangerous kick. You don't want to be in the middle of that. So, in here, uh, we keep on going. And this is uh, the, the time where actually Spider-Man loses its power. So, it's been, have to be saved by uh, Black Cat, which was definitely cool. I always have a hard, look at that, Scorpion, who looks really bad. Always have that um, relationship between uh, Black Cat and Sp uh, Peter Parker was always my one of my favorite highlights of this. For some reason, you always kind of like the bad girl. And I always like that. I always had the relationship they had through the 80s. And of course, kind of came into, uh, to not a culmination, but it came to a highlight within in the 90s. Uh, and the relationship, of course, now that Peter Parker is married. So all of that kind of plays a big part. But look at Scorpion. Look at those colors. You know, the coloring work here is fantastic. It was done great. It really highlights uh, this art. But look at that. Look at that. Definitely good with their female body, but definitely good with everything else. Look at those expressions. It's all about expression with comics. And this is another of my favorite uh, comics of this run. Look at all this. The bad guy is really beating um, uh, Black Cat to the pulp, but yet yeah, Spider-Man coming to, to the rescue. This is another of my favorite ones. Love, love this art here, you can see. Love the art, love the relationship, that jealousy between those two. Looking hot, too. You see the jealousy going on. But you have to read the stories. You're going to love it. If you are, if you have never read this, again, look at that. I think this kind of repeat of the other one, but still very, very, very cool. The chameleon there. Um, but some of those things are, um, now try to retrace back. Oh, look at this one. Um, wow. This is a favorite. He regains his powers. Look at that. This is a splash. This is how you do a splash. A lot of people, they, now coming nowadays, they have the splashes every, all the time. They have the splashes everywhere, and which is cool. But if you're going to do a splash, just do it right. And he did it right. And, you know, this is, as you can see here, and if, you, if you're the one that thinks that he was a copycat, then I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're looking at. This is cleaner than Tots. This is better than Tots. And uh, look at that. Always love this panel. Look at this. Wow. Better with anatomy, better with uh, you know the muscles and the definition, cleaner. 
Um, that relationship, always going to, like I said, I'm always going to be a fan of that relationship between them. But it didn't work out. Uh, that's how it is. You know, he had to go back to his real love, which has always been MJ. But um, keep him going. Definitely, there's a lot of introduction of characters. Uh, but Michelini, man, Michelini was just that man. He was the one that wrote the stories, the one that created the story, the expand on the stories. Look at that. Um, look at Rhino. Rhino, it's okay. I don't think he was great with Rhino, but still pretty cool. He has a lot of, uh, it reminds me of the classic Rhino, which is good. It's good to have that, I, I think, you know, in my opinion. Different styles, different arts. So, some artists are better than some other things. Uh, Boomerang. That's another cool character, cool villain. Low-end villain. But yes, Michelini was, you know, psh, you know, writing doing the stories, shaping the characters, you know, and we go back to this. We normally give, always give credit to the artists. That's actually what we do, naturally. Is that a good thing? No, it is not. But that's how we do it. Um, but yes, the writers are such an inspiration, and they're the big part of these stories for them to develop into something else. Look at that. Look at that face. Wow. That's gross. But hey, cool. Look at that. It's even larger now. You know, as you can see, as he progresses, he gives more and more uh, this more uh, ugh, scary look. He's giving that scary look to, to Venom. He's evolving, and that's thanks to, to Larson, which is very comfortable by now. He's extremely comfortable with what he's doing, and you can see that reflection in the way he does his art. You can see this cover again. Oh, my God, that cover is great. It's awesome. It's awesome if you really love Venom. His Venom is definitely very scary. Uh, and you can see throughout the story, uh, that relationship between Spider-Man and Venom, it's one of the, uh, I would say, the greatest kind of most uh, uh, things functional relationships between, uh, uh, you know, between foes. You know, they're, they have helped each other, they have, you know, attacked each other, look at Sandman, and they have hate each other. It's just, it's just definitely dysfunctional. But it really, really gives uh, a lot for, you know, really cool storytelling. And uh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, this is what makes him great. This is what really makes this character great, uh, um, and the, particularly uh, Larson. You know, his art. But the stories have to be a, play a big part of it. They, they could be cheesy, looking really, really hot there. Um, look at that image. Definitely. He does better, in my opinion. Like I said, and I'm going to say it again. Probably going to say it like a thousand times in this video. Look at that Dr. Doom. He looks fantastic. That's classic standing. Uh, I'm so excited that now, the you know, Fox is going to be part of Disney. So I don't know what they're going to do with the Fantastic Four and with Dr. Doom. But there's so many characters. The X-Men, they're coming now to to their control. So And the movies, uh, movie rights. So I'm just excited. I'm pumped for what, you know, Disney and Marvel are going to do together. So we'll see what happens. And the more you see, the more this, the more the freestyle that he does with, with Spider-Man, the movement, the exaggeration of the movement, all of that. He definitely did have more defined, more a much better anatomy. I think Bagley improved too on, on it, but I, I prefer... Uh, uh, in this case, Larson's definitely, you know, its style with with uh, with Spider-Man and all, actually with Peter Parker and all the characters than I do um, um, Bagley. But I think I consider both great. And coming to this, look at that. Look at all of those things. And here there is number 15 uh, of the Spider-Man: The Solo Run that is not included on the previous uh, Spider-Man Omnibus by Todd McFarlane that I already review, that I previously review. This is number 15 that was missing there. Uh, which is a solo story, and it was illustrated by Eric Larson. He also did his own inking, and let me tell you something. When he does his own inking, he is good. This is definitely good. This is a great highlight. This is a much fun story uh, way of doing it. He was extremely fun. He, he, took, he, made, you know, he actually changed the way he did it. He kind of followed some of what, uh, in this case, Todd was doing with the book, and he applied his own twist. But look at that. Look at that beast. He looks awesome you know all of this is awesome and, and all of this of course i reviewed before but the, now in this in this omnibus it just takes it takes it to a total new level here another great panel with the hulk love this he's just getting good at it I, i'm i'm you know going through all of this i'm so glad that marvel decided finally to give him uh you know an omnibus treatment um he definitely deserved it uh, as a fan of this, and here's a lot of words 
um, which I'm not really a fan, but he was actually on this when he was doing some of that writing because this is actually Spider-Man, of course. And so um, that's when Todd, le uh, Todd left, and so he had to kind of fill in, so he created this, The Revenge of the Sin Sinister Six, which was pretty much his um, departure after this from uh, from Marvel Comics too. Uh, but yeah, he, he went with a bang. Definitely this is a, a highlight for a lot of people. A lot of people love this run. And look at that. You know, this cover. All of this. The confrontation. Uh, it was crazy. But he was good at it. And I love that he introduced the Fantastic Four. He, this is an over-the-top story with a lot of fights. And um, which is pretty cool. But this ended, you know, I really with a happy birthday here. Which I always love this. Love this, all the people in the life of Peter Parker, which to me is always going to be that highlight of what, you know, you know, Spider-Man is. And then uh, a few years later, I think it was like nine years later, he came back and did something else for Marvel. And now this is included here, which I'm very glad that they included everything that he did for Marvel for Spider-Man. These are, of course, digital colors now, which, you know, uh, some, you know, some people love and uh, I'm okay with them. But, of course, you know, the classics to me are better. Uh, at least from that perspective of my childhood memories. But yeah, this is included here. Um, definitely the story is okay. You know, it's just not that great. But look at that art. You know, definitely a signature, signature style for um, what, you know, uh, Larson does. As a bonus, there's another uh, Amazing Spider-Man. This actually was the first time that um, uh, Larson did Spider-Man. Uh, and number 287, though, this is back in the 80s. Um, cool that this was added as an extra uh, of course is Eric Larson doing the the art as you can see there was that that kind of style and there's a lot of reflection um, it reminds me a lot of the art of like I said before Frank Miller he definitely kind of follow in those suits uh, and of course this is uh, their devil so uh, I'm, I'm very glad that they added this and, and you go to the extras there's a lot of covers love this cover love all of this love all of that <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of pluses. This is what makes this omnibus is really uh, shine. It's all the extras that are included in the stories. And here you have the, the, the cards. He had the profile from Eric Larson. That's a lot of material to read. The the Wrench of the Sinister Six. There's a lot of, you know, this, the, the prints um, without the colors. This gallery. Love that Marvel includes all of those things here. Um, it's just cool. I always going to love to see all this. I was going to love to see what really makes this art. You know, the things, the work that goes into it, the detail, the hours. I imagine the people sitting down hours after hours just trying to come up with the best um, stories. And I really I'm grateful for the time that I have spent doing all of these things, you know, for really for all of us, you know, really giving us something to, to really be joyful about. In conclusion, do I recommend this book? Yes, I do. I really, really recommend this book to anyone, any Spider-Man uh, fan. Uh, it's definitely my favorite run of Spider-Man from the 90s. Uh, definitely, I have a, it has a special uh, place in my heart growing up. Uh, and I really love it. I definitely love it more than The, the Amazing Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. And definitely, this is a highlight. Now, uh, I would have to say this. Uh, if you have that... Um, book you should have this one as a compliment same as you have the spider-man uh by todd mcfarland the, the the other omnibus i think this is also goes alongside it if it's not net to extremely that one is not extremely necessary uh if you know um uh, just to complement this one if you only get this one uh it's always good to have the uh, the original the amazing spider-man uh, which is going to be reprinted soon, uh, so that way you can know or get up to speed with the stories, and you sh you you don't really have, need to have the other one, uh, the other uh, the smaller uh, Spider-Man omnibus. But definitely, this is a must-have for Spider-Man fans. Eric Larson, I admire him. He is a very outspoken person. Uh, he speaks his mind uh, sometimes more than what he actually should. But um, he is always is very political. If you follow him on Twitter, you follow him on face in Facebook. He definitely is. He's on his own man. But one thing I can say, I really admire what he has done. He's always gonna follow in the shadow of Todd McFarlane to many people. But in my case, I consider uh, Eric a, a highlight of, of of everything that happened in the 90s. He's definitely a, a phenomenal artist. I uh, really admire what he did there, and then what he has done with the Savage Dragon that I still to this day I still read. 
and the part that he he was a big part of a fundament for Image Comics. If you're interested on this book, I have the high uh, in this case the links below. Just sign to these affiliates, you can find it. Uh, anything you purchase through them, uh, of course, uh, you get uh, you help this channel. Uh, don't forget to follow me on the different. Um, uh, different uh, uh, sites on the different social uh, sites. You have uh, my Twitter account, you have Instagram, or my Facebook page. Please follow me there. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Just hit the notification button so you can get all the highlights. And you know, I'll see you next week on the next book review. So thank you, my friends. Uh, God bless.